When a sudden challenge hits, you you hope that you'll make the right decisions, even if you don't feel like the good like they're the good or comfortable decisions. And even when when you believe you've done right, you could still face some big time consequences that will test you more than those challenges that were the initial catalyst. That's the story that my guest presents in her new best selling novel, which as you read it, by the way, fair warning, it is going to send you into what if mode regarding yourself. Her book is Save Me. Now, being a best selling author, you can also Read her weekly column, Chick Wit, in the Philadelphia Inquirer. We say good morning to one of my favorite Italian authors, Lisa Scottolini. Good morning, my dear. Good morning, honey. How are you doing? Well, I have to say now, bias here, I've been a fan of your work and a secret admirer of yours in all variety of ways. But you, <laughs> this is the best of your best with Save Me. I mean, the, you have outdone, overachieved, gone past every high level of expectation that people, your fans and new readers have of you. And... This this is your best work. Oh, you are so wonderful to say that, and thank you for that. I really, I really, you know, you do. I mean, there's been 18 books now, but the truth is, you're always trying to improve. I mean, if you're me, you really try to do something better and different. And this is a little different. I mean, as was look again. I guess what's sort of happening in my life is, I think, as my I'm an empty nester now, and my daughter has moved out to the wilds of New York City, (laughs) and I feel, uh, I think more about her even than I used to. So I think when I write about mothers and children like I did in this, in in Save Me, I kind of, uh, it's a new thing, but I really like the emotionality it, it brings. And you also take, I think, again, because that's why I said the the reader's going to slip into what-if mode regarding themselves, because the story what Rose McKenna faces you know, like it or not, it's it's stuff that either is happening to someone who's listening right now, or realistically, could happen to someone that's listening well, to that's us right now. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I kind of want to make it realistic. The secret idea behind this book, I got the idea for this book from a conversation with a friend of mine who uh, quickly has a, has a child who's in a car seat, right? And she offered to bring another friend's kid, friend's child home. And when she got to her car, she realized she had two kids who both of whom needed car seats, and she had only one car seat. And she couldn't decide who to give the car seat to, you know, because she wanted to give it to her kid. But then again, we tend to treat other people's things better than our own. And she was responsible for the child, so she gave it to the other child. Now, when she got home, her husband was like, what are you doing? And she and I talked about that for an hour and a half. And I thought, that's going to be the next book. And and that's what underlies Save Me, where this mom, you know, volunteers in a cafeteria lunchroom because her kid's being bullied. And some little fighting breaks out with her daughter. Her daughter runs out of the room. And then all of a sudden, something goes wrong in the, in the, in the kitchen. And there's an explosion. And there, it just rocks the place. And the next thing you know, uh, our girl's knocked unconscious. And when she wakes up, the decision she has to make is right in front of her is the bully. Her daughter's bully in elementary school. Mm-hmm. And she has to say, go, well, do I save my daughter's bully? Or do I say, or run, run out of the room, down the hall, and go save my daughter? And so you see how it's kind of like, even though there's no car seats in it, that situation, I think, well, certainly that situation can happen. I mean, emergencies happen all the time. And I have been a lunch mom. You know, I always thought, gee, what if, you're right, it was, what if this happened? Would I, sa- I love my child to the marrow, would I, but would I sacrifice someone else's child for her? Ooh, I don't know. So that's. And then, you know, as soon as Rose makes this choice in the book, her whole world just falls apart, and she's got to see her way out of this mess. The story, too, involves, I mean, there's whole different aspects about uh, the friends who become reactionaries and uh, local media and the way. And this is something I had Mark Furman on the show a while back, and he wrote a book, too, about how so much of the media, he he, he called it the, the Nancy Gracification of of of, huh. of crime that's you know people get so hyped up into the hype of a story that the facts get out the the facts get buried by the weight of the emotion that's sort of what happens with with uh, what Rose has to deal with not just from outside forces but even inside I mean you talk about you know you bring in the legal world which is certainly an area that you have experience in Lisa her her roots go back to being a, being a lawyer don't hold that against her by the way the um, <laughs> you know maybe you know especially here in New Jersey but that's Another talk for another time. How dare you? <laughs> I, you know, highest per capita of attorneys in any state in the country. That and public public workers. But that's uh, <laughs> one more reason why you're you probably have here in Pennsylvania. But you know, it's just a matter of you know how much how much can one person 
take and stand and still seek out to to right the ship that they had no role in in capsizing. Well, that's right. She does. And I think it's true, the first part of what you said, and that, you know, the book is about, has bullying in it. You know, it's really, a, there's, it's a lot about childhood bullying and the anguish of that situation for parents, because I really feel like that's no win. But a bigger part of the book to me, at least what I intended, was that it'd be about adult bullying, like the kind of thing you're talking about. Because now we have so much the technology, like Facebook and, uh, you know, Twitter, news, cell phones, texts. News can travel fast now, and the news gets – It's still, you still play good old-fashioned telephone where the news just gets wronger and wronger and wronger the more the – and people get instant opinions based on no facts or based on scant facts. And that ends up sort of – Rose ends up not understanding how bad bullying is until she herself gets bullied. And, you know, you make the point about lawyers, and it's a good one because I really sometimes think – having been a lawyer in the past, that there are certain people who just sue other people just to be bullies. Or the, and they threaten it, and they scare people, and they, they ruin lives. And I sort of wanted to look at that in that light. And maybe, you know, people will see that in the book if they're doing it, because it really it isn't what the justice system was meant to do. And it, um, but it certainly does happen every day. Talking with Lisa Scandalini, her new bestseller, Save Me. She also has her weekly column in the Philadelphia Inquirer, Chick Wits. You can see the entire Lisa Scandalini world at scandalini.com, and you're listening to Issues and Ideas. With a story like this, do you know at every point as you're writing it the direction you're heading? Or does the story, especially with the, with the story in Save Me, can you write going one way and then think, well, I didn't know I was headed this way. This is cool. It's more the latter. It's not very impressive to say, though. But, you know, we, we go back, so we'll tell them the truth. I mean, you know, people say, do you know how it ends? I don't know how it middles. I don't know anything. I just had the premise, which came to me from the car seat, and I was like, okay, go. Now she's going to make this decision. As soon as she makes that decision, what's going to happen next? Well, her husband's going to start looking at her funny. Her kid's life is going to be even harder in school. The community is going to have this reaction. She's going to react to that. And so you sort of end up oddly and paradoxically in, in, in actually in a real situation. At least it feels that way to me. And so I'm always sort of like, well, what would this real person do next? And I kind of construct the book that way. It does make you nervous because I'm not always sure. You know, I don't, it's not great to know how it will end, especially when you have to, <laughs> when it's your job. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But I, I, I've done it that way for 20 years now. And now I'm getting a little faith that, Knock wood. It will turn out like it will. It'll be okay. These these women main characters tend to um, find a way out of things, and the, and the great characters around them tend to figure it out too. And so, uh, it, it tends to work out. Thank yeah. God. Well, especially with this with the story and save me with Rose because you know we we see so many of these novels where the the human is called on to do the superhuman and. Rose, again, going back to what I said in the introduction, that the reader will slip into a personal what-if mode, Rose is being asked to do the human, quite frankly. Right. It's, it's interesting, because I always think about that. Like, you just put your finger on it, and actually no one ever has, which is, you know, the superhuman versus human. You know, because I'm not a big fan of, I mean, I watch Iron Man and all those things, but I really like to see problems that real people have and sort of see the point at which the real person actually becomes superhuman in a way. I mean, she's not going to, like, throw lightning bolts, but she finds confidence in herself and strength in herself that she didn't know she had. And I sort of, towards the end of the book, I remember writing this, because she's kind of doing all these things, and at some point she thinks to herself, I'm not an action hero. And then her next thought, and I was writing it, I was like, you know what? Yes, you are. Like, you, moms are just different kinds of action heroes, you know? They might not shoot guns or catch bad guys, but, you know, we're doing all the things we do. Dads are, too, but I just happen to be writing about mothers, and that's what I, what I am. And that real, I kind of wanted to make, give credit to that, you know, to really cast a spotlight on that and, how, and frankly, hope that women and men see, see moms in that light because moms really are action heroes, and it was kind of cool to write that down. I thought of uh, something that John Cleese from Monty Python uh, once said about, about writing comedy. And, you know, a lot of what you said about writing and knowing where you want to go. He said, the beginning 
and the end are the easy parts. It's that damn stuff in the middle that's the royal pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, I have a crush on John Cleese, and that, see, we belong together. <laughs> Clearly, because <laughs> he's right. He's right. Wrapping up time with Lisa Scarlina, her new bestseller that you got to add to the mandatory reading library of Save Me and her weekly Chick Wit column in the Philadelphia Inquirer, scarlina.com on the web. And you were listening to Issues and Ideas. How was how that column working out? I mean, I, I remember when you started, the first thing I thought of, wait, Philadelphia Inquirer expects to limit an Italian woman to 750 words a week. How is that possible? <laughs> You're the best, Chris. I, I, uh, I know. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I started it because I went to the newspaper, and because all the news was bad, and the newspaper can't do anything about that. And I said, you know, why don't we write something funny? And you, you, you remember Irma Bombeck? Oh, I know yeah. you're very young. But Irma Bombeck was such a wonderful humorist, and she wasn't writing about politics or anything like that. She was just writing about her family. And I thought, well, I can do that. So I went to the newspaper and said, will you let me try? And they said, sure, which was very nice of them. And uh, as you say, people who don't get the Philadelphia Inquirer can read this on my website, scottalini.com. I put my, post my column every Sunday. And it really ends up being just about my life, but really it's only in theory about my life. It's really about the life of ordinary woman, right, because that's what I am. Right. And I have, a little, I have a little feisty mom, and I have a little feisty daughter, <laughs> and i got to figure out how to navigate those waters. And um, it's really fun to do. It's really fun. It's going strong three years out, and... We make them into books, and the next one is going to be out in Christmas. It's, it's about mothers and daughters, and it's called uh, Best Friends and Occasional Enemies, <laughs> which, frankly, just about sums it up. Oh, without it, especially in an Italian family. <laughs> well, as you wait for that, certainly, again, add Save Me to your reading list because, I mean, along with a— and, and, and you learn, too, how Elisa wrote, the, wrote Save Me. It is really a, a, a true, real-time development story, the way that, she, that Lisa writes— in this case, and it's it touches on issues that I think even as you are reading for the excitement, and the entertainment, it will compel you to think further about the issues of bullying and uh, the legal profession and media relationships, intimidation, education, the whole nine yards. And you know, it gets uh, any any way that you can become better informed, better aware of the, your little piece of the world, even when it's through a piece of entertainment. I think that's a good thing. Scottolini.com is where you see everything in the wide, wide world. Elisa Scottolini, her books, her thoughts, her ideas, her chick wit column, her appearances, photos. I think I'm even in one of those photos somewhere, too, somewhere in the bowels of that website. So, again, Scottolini.com. Lisa, you're the best. Thanks for being here. Thank you. You are, you are the best.